in today's lecture we, we will be talking about taxation now taxation often means is distorting the actual price because government charges a tax on whatever price you are paying think about the sales tax that you pay on the products you are buying so what where the sales tax is going sales tax is going to the government but essentially what's happening the actual cost is on you as a buyer so often taxes are seen as a market distorting that means it's something setting a price other than the market price so first let's try to understand what happens when government imposes tax so let's start with something called the sales tax sales tax is something which is actually you pay the money to the sellers but sellers gives that money to the government think about whenever you are buying anything in a store in a new york state you have to pay a sales tax of 8% so let's try to understand it so this is a simple demand and supply so we'll start with this is a is the initial equilibrium or you can say the market equilibrium with the price set at p star and quantity q star so p star and q star are equilibrium price and quantity when there is no taxation but when government imposes the sales tax which essentially means that your market supply curve shifts left because there is a cost on the sellers to pay that tax though the sellers try to collect that tax from you but there can be a cost for the seller essentially what happens the price that seller gets to keep is not the actual price they have to give a part of that to the government so as a result your new equilibrium is at point b so point b is equilibrium after tax as a result what happened now you're buying less and as a result price has gone up from p start to p1 but here's the problem problem is that do the sellers get to keep everything no sellers cannot keep everything because sellers has to pay a tax and how much is that tax in this particular context so tax is actually this is the tax tax per unit that the government is charging so p1 to p0 so tax per unit that means per unit they are selling is p1 minus p0 and how many units they are selling at a higher price because p1 is the price actually paid by the buyers so you can say p1 is the price paid by consumers whereas p not is the price kept by sellers so sellers gets to keep only this much price and where the rest is going rest is going to the government and what's the total tax revenue collected this is the total tax revenue collected how do you get it it's nothing but your tax per unit which is p1 minus p not times q1 q1 is the quantities they are selling essentially what this means if tax is p1 minus p0 per unit they are buying or selling times the quantity they are selling now we in the last class we talked about something called a dead weight loss so there is a dead weight loss associated with taxation and that dead weight loss is this particular triangle this is the dead weight loss of taxation because as a result of taxation there are some people who can't afford the product anymore and also because sellers only get to keep p not not p1 so they are not willing to sell enough so as a result there are market distorting effects of taxation so let's try to understand all these things using a, another example which is how the behavior changes because of taxation often taxation is used to change the behavior of uh, the consumers for example cigarettes in new york state are taxed heavily because government wants to discourage people from smoking so essentially what they are doing they are jacking up the price of cigarettes by imposing taxes 
a similar kind of thing happened in Denmark. Apparently, people in Denmark, they love butter. So, in this particular diagram here, which is given the price of butter uh, per, per kg, and the kroner is the currency the people use in Denmark, and this is the quantity of butter. At 45 rupees, 45 kroner per kg, an average person in Denmark was consuming two kgs of butter per year, which is a lot of butter to eat. So initially, this is the equilibrium. This is a demand curve for butter, and this is a supply curve. This is a demand curve, and this is the equilibrium in the market for butter in Denmark. At this price, they are selling uh, at kroner 45 and they are buying 2 kgs of uh, butter. So what government did, they imposed a tax of 10 kroner per kg which essentially shifts the supply curve up because so this is your kroner 10. As a result what happened, your new equilibrium, this is post tax equilibrium as a result what happened your consumption of butter declined to 1.6 kg this is 1.6 kg and the price which is paid by the consumers are now is not 45 dollars but they are now paying dollar uh, sorry kroner is the currency 54 kroner now do all the sellers get to keep 54 kronas? No, because they have to pay 10 kronas out of that to the government. So actual price that's kept by the sellers because of this taxation is actually 54 minus 10, which comes out to be somewhere here. So you just bring it down here and it should be somewhere here which is kroner 44. So what essentially what we are saying is that as prices increased consumers started buying less of butter because government artificially jacked up the price of the uh, uh, butter by putting a 10 dollar 10 kroner tax. So as a result, consumer prices rises by 9 kroner. Now you might be wondering why 9 kroner, why not 10? Because 1 kroner is coming from the seller's pocket. So this is something called the incidence of taxation. So what you see here, because of this upward shift of the supply curve, price increases from 45 to 54, but government is charging $10, so 54 minus 10, which is 44. So there's a 1 kroner loss for the sellers. And total tax collected, total tax collected is nothing but this is 1.6 kg times uh, 10, which is the tax collected by the government. So let's come to this idea of the tax incidence. What does this mean? So tax incidence is an economic term, which means the how the burden of taxation is divided between the buyers and sellers. And incidentally, who bears higher tax depends on the elasticity of the demand and supply. So this is the case where we have A, inelast elastic demand and in inel inelastic supply. Remember, if elastic, which means it's more flatter, inelastic, which means steeper. On the other hand, we have B, where we have relatively more elastic supply, that means flatter supply curve, but in inelastic demand, that means a steeper demand curve. What you see here, when there's a taxation, taxation is going to shift the supply left. So in this case, it will shift something like this, S1 to S2, as a result, you reach new equilibrium here, and as a result, quantity decreases from here to here. So price increases from PE to PC. So due to tax, price increase from PE to PC. 
that will be to PC. But the tax, actual excess tax that government imposed is P, uh, PC minus P, uh, PP. So tax is PC minus PP. So how much is the burden on the sellers? So out of this, because total price increase is only very small. It's PC to PE is the increase in price, but actual tax that's paid or going to the government is PC to PE. So this whole thing is the money that's going to the government. So what's happening here, burden on seller is PEPP, -P, whereas burden on buyer, which is consumer, is PCPE. Now, this is what essentially happening here is that why buyers are bearing a le lesser burden of taxation? Because your demand is more elastic than supply. As a result, incidence of taxation is higher on the seller and less on the buyer. Because elastic means if price increases, buyers can move somewhere else, which essentially means that sellers has to adjust more to bear the cost of taxation. The opposite happens in this case. So in this case, opposite happens where your demand is more inelastic than supply or supply is more elastic than demand. The same thing as a result of this, your supply curve shifts left, S2. As a result, you ended up here, but here burden or less total price increases from PE to PC tax per unit is PC PP and burden on buyer is PCPE. So this is the burden on buyer and burden on seller is much less, which is this PEPP. So on the other hand, in this case, as supply is more elastic, then the demand, uh, the tax incidence is higher on the set buyers and less on the sellers because seller can just move somewhere else. Buyers has to buy it. So that's why often cigarettes where demand is very inelastic because those who are addicted to cigarettes, they typically have to have cigarettes no matter what. So government is in a position to increase the prices by imposing taxes and seller don't mind because they are people who are going to have this, they are going to have it anyway. Here's the bottom line. The very elastic supply and relatively inelastic demand, sellers has small burden of taxation, buyers most of the burden. On the other hand, relatively inelastic supply and very elastic demand, we have sellers bear the most of the tax burden, buyer has relatively smaller tax burden. So it all depends on the type of demand and supply that you are facing. And it, so that's why this whole idea of elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply remains important even to determine who bears the actual cost of taxation.